Hi guys, um, today I'm going to talk about free space management. Should be a quick one. So the goal here is to first define the problem. What do I mean by free space management? And then also to look at implementation strategies. So we'll talk about bitmaps, link lists, grouping, and counting. So the main problem here is that storage space is limited and we need to be able to find and reuse space from deleted files. So that's the whole idea here. To do that, we want to keep track of the free space. And some ways that you can use to keep track of the free space um, are as follows. First is bitmaps. So bitmaps, you would have this map of bits um, that each bit would correspond to one of the blocks. And maybe free would be one and used would be zero. The, the pro of this, so this can help you keep track of what all is free and what is used. And so you can look and see what gaps are there so that you can add your file to certain places. So this is easy to implement. Um, hardware actually already exists. So we have a lot of um, registers that will do, um, or operations that will do bitwise um, comparisons. So we're good there. Some cons, so um, space requirement. It needs to be in memory to be effective, and these bitmaps can actually grow in size quite substantially, which might be okay for a small um, a small amount of storage space, but if your storage space grows, your bitmap needs to grow as well. The second way you can do it is you can do a linked list, so you can actually link all of the free nodes together. The pros of this is that um, it, there's easy removal in addition, um, and it's relatively easy to implement. So again, so you have, so all of these gray ones are the free space. Um, whenever a file comes in and needs one of these, it can just remove from the front, great, fine, and then three becomes the head, so on and so forth. And then likewise, if one of these becomes free, then we can just add it to, the, we can just point a pointer from the very end of it to the, the new one. So it's really easy to add and remove things. Um, so it also makes it easy to implement. So cons, again, we have this overhead of pointers. Traversing it would be inefficient, but there's really not very many times we're actually going to have to traverse the full free space list. It's going to be just these adding and removing from the front and back. Um, and reliability, so anytime we're talking about pointers linking things together, if one of those pointers become corrupt, then we're going to run into issues. Another way that you can implement this is by grouping. So um, it's a variation of linked, of linking things. However, now in this case, this first um, free block will have a list. So this first free block will now have a list of n other free blocks. So it'll have a list of three, four, five, eight, that's an eight, I swear, nine, so on and so forth, whatever n you decide. Um, and now we only keep track, our list only keeps track of these larger nodes. So we don't now have to link to each individual one. We get rid of all these links and we just have one list here that holds n number of addresses of other free byte, their blocks. So now when we need something, we'll come into our, um, this list and we'll grab something off of, of its list. Some pros of this is that there's less items in the list. Um, and also large chunks can be fined really quickly. So if a large file comes in and it's gonna end up needing all 27 um, of these free, or however many are here, all of these free spaces, then um, in just linked, alloc or linked um, implementation, it would have to walk through each one of these links and grab that space. Whereas if it, we use this kind of implementation, it can just come to this head node and just grab all of these at once. So, um, that makes it a little quicker. Reliability is still an issue because we're talking about linking things. Um, and then the overhead of actually um, having these nodes here is a little bit higher. The last thing that I want to talk about is counting. So this takes advantage of the fact that in contiguous or clustered allocation, large chunks of contiguous memory will become available at the same time, right? So if here this file is occupying these four locations, when that file is closed or deleted, all of that's going to become available all at once. So that those contiguous chunks will all be available. So the idea here is that why don't we store, so now these four chunks are available. 
in this first head node, we'll, or we'll just store this very first one and we'll tell it how many available um, chunks are after it. So we say, so we store this node in our list, our free space list, and that has some metadata saying that the next three nodes are also free. So now when a file comes in and needs um, space, it's going to come in, it's going to hit this, and it's going to say, okay, I've, I'll grab you and maybe three, all three of your, um, of the following ones, or maybe just two, so on and so forth. So um, some pros, so again, you have a shorter list. Um, you don't actually have to keep all of them in the list. Um, so the cons, so each entry is gonna require a little bit more space because we're gonna keep track of um, how many are available directly after it. So some cons, but in general, it's a relatively good strategy. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.